God has an encouraging word for you today through the Bible-based teaching of Dr. Don Wilton. As we study God's word together, connect with us online at TEWonline.org or on the phone at 866-899-9673. Now let's open our hearts and God's word together with Dr. Don Wilton and God's encouraging word. Just before Jesus went to the cross, I wonder how many subjects that he would have loved to have spoken to, to those he loved, to his disciples. One can only imagine the syllabi, the contents of conversation, the important issues. Jesus was about to go to the cross, and he gathered spiritual people together. And he did two things. He showed them the meaning of the cross. And then he instructed them to gather at the foot of the cross, to actually do it. Jesus loved his disciples so much. He knew them. He understood their world. He saw the conflict. I think first and foremost, he knew that each one of those disciples were sinners. And he knew that they couldn't handle the world in which they lived without Jesus of the cross. Jesus knew that. There's somebody right now asking more questions than you could ever have answers to. There's somebody saying, is there a hope and a future for our nation? Where is America going? What are we leaving behind for our sons and our daughters? And Jesus says, let's meet. at the foot of the cross. There's so many passages of Scripture I want to share with you today, my beloved congregation. I want to tell you where I'm going with this. This is no ordinary worship service. God has spoken to my heart, and he wants me to say this to us. And in just a moment, yes, we say at the end of the service, but I want you to be prepared for it. I'm going to ask you, if you would come and totally abandon yourself at the foot of the cross, I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat. I'm going to ask you in Genesis, as Jordan leads that worship service there in a while. I'm going to ask if you're a deacon today that you lead the way. I've already spoken to our chairman of deacons, and I know Dr. Sebeski will lead the way, as will our vice chairman, Ed Roof. Before we met this morning, I met with our deacons who are serving in this service. We did that for years and years. <laughs> I, I told our chairman and our deacons this morning, I said, you know, COVID has messed up so many things. Can somebody give me a holy nod? <laughs> COVID has just messed up so many things. Just can't do this and can't do that and have to change this and it's not over. But I loved meeting with the deacons before the Lord's Supper. And here's the reason why. Because Paul said, that which I have received, I pass on to you. And I asked the deacons if there was any deacon this morning 
I ask the deacons as your pastor, if there is any deacon this morning who believes before God that they are qualified to pass on anything from God, to say anything, there's not one of us who are qualified. I am the least qualified. And Paul said that's why when you meet at the foot of the cross, you have an opportunity to confess your sin before him. Start doing it now. That is the only way Jesus will bless this church. He's blessed this church for decades. And unless we come together at the foot of the cross, he will not bless your family, your business, your children, name it. The nation of Israel had a special place in God's heart. We know that, don't we? That's why I keep going back. We have sponsored people to go to Israel for years. I've had people give money to send pastors and ministers all around the country. There are pastors, retired pastors, sitting in this congregation that were sponsored by some of you to go to Israel. Why? Oh, do you have time for me to get on to eschatology? <laughs> That's where Jesus is going to set up his headquarters. But I'm going to tell you for the purpose of this meeting at the foot of the cross is because that's the place where Jesus went to the cross. And I can tell you when I go to Israel, I'll be going again in January. When we go to Israel, it culminates in the garden tomb. Everyone who's been there, we gather at the foot of the cross. There's the empty tomb there's Golgotha, the place of the skull. We gather there, and we bow our heads, and we confess, and we sing, and we pray to Him, and you can sense the power and presence of Jesus. Do you want that? Are you serious, church? I think you are. <laughs> I know you well enough. And so here's the nation of Israel. This is what was said of, by the nation of Israel in Psalm 130. This is Israel, Psalm 130. Out of the depths, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord. Hear my voice. Apply this to your own life. I'm going to start again because some of you are thinking about lunch. <laughs> I'm going to start again because we're all sinners. Watch this. You know why I'm going to start again? Because Satan does not want you to stand at the foot of the cross. He's doing everything he can. He's in your mind, your thoughts. He's disturbing you. He's pulling you. He's distracting you. Let's start again. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, if you would hold to account my sin and his sin and her sin, oh Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more 
than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem his people from all their iniquities. What's weighing you down today? What sin is in your life? What wrong has been done? What injustice? What issue are you dealing with? What sadness, grief are you battling with? What anxiety do you have in your heart? What do we find at the foot of the cross? May I mention just a few. I think we've got to start out, what we find at the foot of the cross is the whole world. They were there. I could have used that word every person, right? Please forgive me for trying to paint a picture that I cannot paint but how many times I've sat there looking at the skull, the place of the skull, which was outside of the city of Jerusalem, the marketplace. It was a busy place. It was a place of public execution. It was a place where the Romans wanted to maximize their advertising. That's why they took Jesus there. And the two criminals... They wanted all, everybody to see and to know and to understand and to fear them. This was very public. And gathered there at the feet of Jesus, at the foot of the cross, was the whole world. I wonder who those people were. Am I looking at them? I think so. Church, many years ago, many, many years ago, sitting in a meeting with a lot of godly men in our church, one man by the name of Kaz McCaslin, one of the most wonderful men I have ever served alongside, a godly man in that meeting looked over at me and he said these exact words 26 years ago pastor what do you see for first baptist church and i just blurted this out it just like blurted it out i said i see a church where everyone can invite anyone to come to First Baptist Church to encounter the living one. And that's who we are. Can I put that in different language? The church, the living church, the church that met with Jesus in the upper room, what Jesus was saying to them was the church must be the place where everyone who knows better will invite anyone. Now, let's start defining anyone. Who did Jesus tell was not permitted to come to the foot of the cross? So you are guilty of adultery. And by the way, there are people in this congregation that I know have committed adultery, and there are many of you. I've had the privilege of praying with you. I've had the privilege of watching you and your precious family forgive one another. 
at the foot of the cross. I've had the privilege of hearing and seeing Jesus forgiving you. Could we name a sin that has not been committed by God's people? The church, everyone can invite anyone. You are welcome here because this is the foot of the cross. You know, there were two criminals that were crucified alongside Jesus. One of those scoffed at him. The other one repented, and Jesus said to this man who deserved to die, today you will be with me in paradise. Wow! Now, I'm a Baptist. I'm a little ticked off about it because he didn't get baptized before he went to heaven. I just had to slide that in for my Presbyterian friends. <laughs> there they were at the foot of the cross. <clears throat> how you how are you doing? The foot of the cross, we not only find the world, but I've got to mention them if you don't mind. But at the foot of the cross, we find the disciples. Now, by the way, the disciples, please at least put me in that category, me and Dr. Mickey Sebeski. Brother Mickey, come stand up here with me a second. This is our chairman of Deacons, and I love him to bits. Now, if you look at these two fine gentlemen, Okay. <laughs> we would be in that group. We have to be, right? Yes, sir. I can shake on that. Yes, sir. See, we would have to be, right? <laughs> However, now I'm going to make him go and sit down because I might include him in something I might regret. <laughs> could we just, I wish I could go through all the disciples. How about Peter? He was there, disciple very loved. What had he just done? Excuse me? What had Peter just done? What about Matthew? Well, you know, Matthew, we can get all in the background of Matthew. He was a tax collector. He was probably one of the number one hated people on his team. I'm sure, you know, if he hadn't followed Jesus, Jesus just changed his whole life. You know, what about James and John? Love talking about James and John, but one thing that always stands up about me was that they were first-hand witnesses to the transfiguration. Jesus took them, remember, up the mountain, and he was transfigured into his heavenly body. These were the men that saw Elijah and Moses. Many years after they died, he saw them, spoke to them. Listen, you wouldn't have had any question talking to them about life after death and the meaning of eternal life. Well, they were there at the foot of the cross. You know, I've I've just got to say this. The third group, and I'm putting, is a hurting church. Folks, when Jesus gathered the disciples in the upper room, he was sending the church out into what? It was a hurting church. They were gathered there saying, what? All these believers were standing there at the foot of the cross saying, we're bewildered, we're hurt. What's going on? 
How are we going to survive? There's no future. Everybody, I mean, they had every question in mind. Jesus gathered them at the foot of the cross. So that brings me to the fourth one, <laughs> ourselves. You know, we sing a song, were you there when they crucified my Lord? I was there. Ourselves. My father always used to tell me, be very careful about pointing when you preach. <laughs> you might all say, hmm, that's true. You know, I may do this every now and again or this every now and again or some other kind of gesture, but I really try and discipline myself. But I do. I mean, you can find a lot of footage of me pointing, and I wish I didn't. And you all know the reason, don't you? Because many of you are school teachers. So every time you point, hello. There but by the grace of God go we, ourselves. I'm praying for believers, for myself, for our church, for you, for your family, for what our children are growing up into, what they're facing, this fast-moving world. All these things going, it's just like, what's going on? It's like a big perfect storm. If I had another three years, I'd love to get back into eschatology and show you how this fits in God's economy. Ourselves, and so it is, my beloved friends, meeting at the foot of the cross. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, God's Word says this, as we begin to prepare ourselves for the invitation and for the participation in the Lord's Supper together. This is what he said in verse 27, therefore whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. Wow. Let a person therefore examine himself and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who drinks and eats without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Be careful what you say and how you talk and how you behave as a believer. That is why many of you are weak and ill. And this one I've never been able to figure out. And this is why some of you have died. God's Word says directly related to the foot of the cross, that believers who violate the Jesus syndrome could possibly die. Jesus said that. God will take them out. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. There's the unity of the church. Everything Jesus said is about being one in Christ. It is the imperative of the body of Christ. It is the unattainable
attainable goal because we cannot do it in and of ourselves, but at the foot of the cross, Jesus can. I cannot fix this world, but Jesus can. I cannot fix my marriage, but Jesus can. I cannot get rid of this pain and anxiety and fear, but Jesus can. Mercy, yes, Jesus can. I pray that you realize God is using this broadcast to let you know he loves you. He has a plan for your life, an opportunity to have your sins forgiven and a place in heaven just by saying yes to Jesus Christ. I'd love to lead you in a simple prayer. You can repeat after me or just say me too, God. Lord, I know that, that you can do things in my life I cannot. And Lord, I know I have made some mess of some things. And so Lord, I turn my back on me being in control and ask you to be the Lord of my life, to be the CEO. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died and, and rose to conquer death. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Wow, if you've made that decision in your heart, it doesn't matter whether you're saying the same words, but if you believe in Jesus, you've, you've stepped out in faith, God is ready to do remarkable things, and Dr. Don has prepared remarkable resources that will help you grow. It's a part of daily studying in God's Word, of finding a local church. Again, give us a call. We'd love to pray with you, to celebrate with you, and send you these free resources from Dr. Don. The number on your screen, that 866-899 word number, is always answered 24 hours a day. If you've got questions, let's discover those answers in God's encouraging Word. And thank you so much for so many of you that are prayerfully and financially supporting this ministry. We're here because of the power of God and your generous support. Until next time, take care and God bless. We all could use some encouragement. If you need to touch base, we're online at tewonline.org, 24 hours a day, let's connect.